Shaping success with West Tankersley is brought to you by Aggressive Marketing Solutions, your solution for all business social media needs. If you need a team of social media marketers and content creators to help you build your brand on social media, text West 2020 to 541 709 6502 today. Get started building your brand on social media. Success is defined differently by every individual. Some have never even considered what it is. I hope when I get older I'll be successful. What does that even mean? Money? Cars? Big house? On this show we strive to look at it a little deeper. Learning from successful individuals on what they believe success really is and how to obtain it. Everybody, enjoy the show. This is Shaping Success with Wes Tankersley. Hello and welcome to the Shaping Success podcast and live show. This is episode 10. We are here with our guest, John Hutton. John is a successful video and photo creator out of Washington State. Uh, so let's dive into how John shapes his success. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the show, John. How you doing? Nice. Nice talking to you in person, actually. Mm-hmm. Well, I know. It's been, a, it's been a pretty cool uh, transition cool here. So. on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you got toilet paper over there? Yeah, uh, we got we got a little bit over here. We're not we're not quite out yet. Oh, it didn't yeah, hit us fighting at the stores. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't bad. hit us as early as it hit Washington, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been bad over here. Yeah. Are you guys in uh quarantine like in your house for good yet or um like my wife and kids are, but I'm not. I, I still have work. You know, so I'm yeah. going out to work. A lot of my uh, business jobs and stuff though got postponed. But um, yeah, yeah that's, a job that I do. Go ahead. That's pretty rough. Um, but hey, let's keep working through it. That's kind of what I feel like. I feel like we've got this opportunity to go ahead and do this. It's great that we don't have to be. Not that I don't wouldn't mind hanging out with you, but we don't want to. <laughs> we don't want to make anything happen, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So um, I met John on Twitter. We're going to talk a little bit about John and his process and journey. Uh, John, can you tell us tell us about where it all started? You know, tell me, tell everyone about the story of in high school and things like that, and where you come from, and and we want to know a little bit about you. Well, uh, yeah, I started actually really young. Um, my, you know, my parents had a video camera, like a lot of people do, so I would always go, you know, try to sneak it out of their room and I would go film with some friends and stuff. But yeah, by the time that I was about, uh, probably about eight, I think it was when I wrote my first script. Um, so yeah, I shot with friends and stuff a lot then. And then as time went on, you know, like I couldn't always use my parents' video camera. So I started a, a lawn mowing business, you know, I got enough money to be able to buy a camera and equipment, you know, and everything else. And then, uh, Pretty much from there, it was, I just worked to be able to, to do these other jobs, which uh, at that time, you know, this is before YouTube, um, way before YouTube. There wasn't even videos on internet, you know, back then. So for a kid to be doing that, it, it was weird. You know, like a lot of people thought I was weird for doing it. But um, yeah, I think like the very first uh, website is called like videoupload.com, you know, pretty straightforward. But uh, that was the first one that I ever started putting videos on um and then throughout high school this is still before youtube um there was like a couple contests that came out you know but still internet was nothing like it was you know how it is now because if you try to watch a video on the internet back then you know you would have to wait about 15 minutes for it to load um right. but yeah I, yeah but i ended up uh <clears throat> going into i did a couple contests and i think it was like when i really started at least people looked at it a little bit more seriously is uh i ended up there's an andy bill knockers show and i don't know if you remember that or not but it was on mtv oh, yeah. there was a contest for it to make a rap you know so there was a bunch of people uploading different raps and stuff to this uh contest well i was the only one that made like a rap music video with animation and everything in it and uh it was terrible animation but just the fact that i did it you know, it ended up pushing me through to this contest. And then it was on the MTV2 website, you know, for a long time. And before they picked the winner, um, 
it got down to me and just one other kid and then Andy Bill Nakis just picked whoever he wanted to have in our show. Well, I had like a lot more votes, but then he ended up picking the kid. So instead, oh, just for a while, yeah, just for a while, they ended up like a quick clip at the end of one of his episodes that the kid was on. It just showed my video on uh, MTV2. So from there, people took it a little bit more seriously. Um, so yeah, I just kept working at it. But uh, if you want the full story, by the time I went to film school, they ended up uh, like it, YouTube and all that. That wasn't like re respected at all, you know, on YouTube. Right. Um, so pretty much when I went to school, they're like, if you're gonna keep doing uh, YouTube videos, you're never gonna make it in the film industry because uh, they looked at it as a joke. You know, people aren't really making money like they're doing now doing that. Um, yeah, which is the reality yeah. of that today is crazy because like you said, they thought that was funny. And that's what I thought when, when you were telling me about that in on our Twitter conversations, how that was, it, it's hilarious that it was like not a good thing. And now all of a sudden oh, yeah. it's like, that's all everyone does. Mm. Yeah, it's everywhere now. So, right now even, oh, go ahead. I was just wondering, so where did it go from there? Because you, we talked about it a little bit. Let's keep on going with the story here because you, when they told you that that wasn't really a good thing, you kind of lost connection with that, right? And then moved on oh, to yeah. other things. Yeah, because, you know, I had this one thing I was focused on, you know, I was wanting to be a filmmaker. So here I am at film school, you know, like work with all these other people that had the love for it as much as I did. And then I'm hearing from you know, a directing teacher, writing teacher, you know, all these people saying like, no, you're crazy to do these videos. And at this point, you know, I, I probably, most of the videos I had were like up to a hundred thousand views, which isn't like huge, but at that time, you know, it's a decent amount, but um, they're just like, you gotta get rid of them if you want any future in the film industry. So I just, you know what I did, I deleted all that. I tried to take film more seriously. And uh, I'm not really a very serious, person i like visual effects so i kind of just like to entertain and most of that comes from just making people laugh um but so when this all happened you know i just i took it to heart i deleting and then i tried to be the serious filmmaker and um you know i fit in within the um at my school but like that didn't really get me anywhere you know like that kind of crushed me a little bit so by the time that I ended up uh you know, film school was over. Um, I had a little opportunity where I could be an editor's assistant, um, but it was uh, three months unpaid internship to see if I would get the job. And I was like, oh no, I can't do that. You know, I had student loans to pay for and everything. So I kind of, you know, took a step back and I gave up on myself. I could have made it work, you know, but at that point I gave up and you know that, I wish I just had the mindset I do now you know, back then, and I definitely would have made different decisions. Um, but yeah, I was I was down that path for a while where I was just like, you know, nothing's gonna happen from this. But I don't know, if you have a passion for something, you can feel it, you know, kind of eat away at you, you know, so you always want to do it, you know, so I was still doing things here and there. But I kept telling myself, Oh, no, nothing's gonna happen from it. Nothing's gonna happen from it. But even then, you know, I got asked to do work for people. Um, and different companies and stuff would ask me. So then finally, I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually, you know, um, try to move forward with this. I don't care what I'm doing. I just love to create. I love to do this type of work. And you know, slowly I started doing uh, photography, Photoshop. You know, I would do everything. So I kind of, it's kind of hard to fall into one category just because there's so much that I do. So what, what changed that mindset? What was that? Cause this, you know, shaping success, the, the podcast the live shows about that mindset. Like what made you feel like, cause I, myself, I went through this too. I was, I was one of those people who was like glasses half empty all the time waiting for stuff to happen. And when something good happened, I was happy about it, but now it's a whole different story. So what made you decide that, Hey, this is, this is what I need to do. Well, yeah, I, I first started off, I listened to uh, Tony Robbins podcast at first. And um, you just kind of realize you're not alone, you know, with this feeling like everybody has this feeling. And then uh, from listening to Tony Robbins, and I came upon uh, uh, Gary Vee, you know, same thing, like you just listen to it. And they're like, you're not the only one, one out there, you know, like tons of people deal right. with the same thing. But it's just like, you, 
you gotta overcome it. If it's something that you love, like you should just be doing it. Like, don't worry about what other people are saying. Like you just do it, do it every day. Um, like if you love it, you know, you have to do it. And kind of what's happened to me just by taking that advice of what I picked up from, uh, listening to like Gary Vee's podcast or Tony Robbins is, uh, I just apply it every day. I'm like, okay, well, I want to make this, I'll make this, I'll do some work for other people. And slowly it's grown and grown. And, um, you know, this all started again, probably about four years ago. And then it picked up a little bit more in the past couple of years. But, um, as far as my income goes, like I was working the same job it was decent, a decent job. But, um, once they discovered the work I was doing, it bumped me up to a position where I do all their commercial marketing and a lot of like training and stuff for them. So um, right off the bat, started making more there. And then I'd get pick up jobs from other companies, you know, around. So I had my business license. Um, I started my business license. And then slowly, just within the matter of two years, I tripled my income from uh, the before. So yeah, what's cool is I'm I do hearing, what I love. Yeah, I hear what I'm hearing here, though, is like, you went from being kind of insecure about everything mm -hmm. because people were telling you what you wanted to do was not right. And then you finally found the fact that who cares what other people think. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a great way to look at it because I've, I was the same way. It's like, I was this uh, high school jock, you know, I was too cool for everything that everyone else was doing. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to be putting myself out there. And now I get on here and I'm doing this and I'm doing daily videos for motivational things and things like that. So it's, it's awesome that you found that. Um, yeah. And that's kind of how I met you through that Gary V challenge, because I think everyone was posting that, but all I would see on Twitter was the people that were continually doing it. And there was a few, you were one of them. And then, um, you kind of posted something on Twitter about creating a logo or something for someone. And I kind of, I responded to that. And then that ended up being the show logo that we have up here. I'm not even pointing in the right direction because everything's opposite, but yeah. So what do you, you have a regular day job right and mm -hmm. then a lot of your stuff you do on your own yeah yeah so um i i don't know i have a family so i have a wife and two two boys um four and seven so i try to make time to do everything and luckily my oldest son just recently got into making videos too um normally my schedule you know it's not for everybody but it's you know it's what i do but normally you know like i'll go to sleep at 10 o'clock i'll wake up at three in the morning and then I'll get some work done. And if I have to go into work at uh, my day job at six, well, then that's normally a 12 hour shift. So then I'll come home and I'll have, you know, a couple hours with the family and then I'll do it all over again. But then on my off days, you know, I either I'm uh, doing a video with my kids as kind of like my family time, my time to share with them. It's something that I love and it's something that my uh, sons are interested in. Um, and then I just, you know, anybody else that has work for me to do for my business, you know, I'll do that work then too. But then I constantly do something for myself, you know, something with my kids, uh, something that's going to be for my business, something for their company. So I'm just on this, I'm just making, you know, and I love right. all of it that I'm, that I'm doing, you know, it's enjoyable to me. It, it does keep me really busy. Like right now is actually the, the least busiest I've been with this pandemic, but uh, I'm still working. Like I'm still doing work at home. Yeah. So you, um, that's kind of crazy. Like I, we talked about that a lot and how doing what you love is very important and how I think I'm trying to remember, you told me you were doing something else before you were doing this. So your little break from, from film school and working a little bit, you took a break, right. And, and you hated what you were doing and you just came back to it. How, how did that work out for you? I mean, it takes a lot of hours to get this stuff done, but it doesn't really seem like work, right? Yeah. Well, it, the job that I had before, I don't know, I kind of bounced between jobs um, uh, after film school, but pretty much any job I had, I hated just because I knew I was working to pay off a student loan that I wasn't using anything for. And, um, but yeah, then I landed, it's actually the same company that I work at now, but I worked down in their warehouse. It was absolutely nothing that I ever planned on doing, but just by, I don't know, like once I got more motivated about it and talking more to people and then being more like open about the type of work uh, that I enjoy doing, that's what kind of opened up, you know, one door and then another one opened up and then just kind of continued on. And right now everything's doing, um, I don't know, like everything's going really well and I'm, I still want to grow even more so, but I have a pretty big variety of stuff, you know, that I'm doing. But in my opinion, you know, it's like, 
if you just do a little bit of everything and if it's something that you love, you know, if something picks up or something, you know, somebody will see something that they want here, you know, like it's just the type of work that I do, it does kind of, op- you know, it can op- open me up to a lot of different doors, you know, so. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's I, kind I, of I think about just, being like a, it's kind of like being a jack of all trades and you're invaluable because you oh, yeah. can, if, if your current job that you have right now doesn't work out, they can use you in another area because you can do more than just making videos, more mm-hmm. than just making graphics, more than just taking pictures. So yeah. yeah. Great way to you expand that. that. You brought up that uh, Gary V on Twitter like that actually, because everybody was posted on, well, I can't remember what it was. Some hashtag that Gary V, you know, started. Well, I had this video because yeah. I was, you know, listening to Gary V all the time. And I was like, I think that'd be kind of funny to make a video that was just like, what if Gary V was a Gary V home, you know, because, you know, he's pretty, he's blunt with people what he says, right. you know, so it's like, what if you asked your, uh, your home device and if they answered you, like Gary V would answer you. So I sat there and I cut up a bunch of clips from his podcast, a bunch of audio clips, yeah. made this video. Well, suddenly all these people are retweeting it and they're asking me about it. I thought that was kind of funny because it opened me up to like some more cool people. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I know somewhere along there, that's where we talked, but, uh, yeah, then I was like, well, it's kind of cool. I like, I, I wasn't big on uh, social media marketing. I know like talking to you, but you know, it is important. It really is. And I had a hard time with it since, uh, I just like to create, you know, it's hard to, I want to put so much of that time creating and writing that it's hard to, you know, really push, you know, stuff out there, you know, market it. Right. Um, but that's, I don't know. It's kind of where I'm at right now. Well, and it's interesting too, because we talk a lot, um, a lot about that, but really it's not even really marketing in my opinion. Like I'm, I'm so yeah. it's just putting stuff out there and that's what you do. And I, I saw that Gary V clip and I thought that was hilarious. And then I, I was rolling through your TikTok last night and kind of looking at some of the stuff you've done. And I've, I've looked at a bunch of your videos and they're all really clever. Like I don't have, I'm not that big of a creator. I can talk. You know, that's my, yeah. that's my skill, but I can't, we talk to people like this podcast, you're looking at everything here. I have someone doing that for me because I'm not that creative, but I'm good at talking. I'm good, you know, and I know I have this passion for helping other people succeed. So it's kind of cool to see that. So just understand that your creating is still marketing. You're branding yourself. Like, you know how to do that. So you're still doing it just in yeah. a different way. So, um, so what's, let's talk about, uh, JH visuals. This is your, is this your personal company? Is that what JH yeah. is versus where you work? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. what is like your main focus with JH then? What do you do there? Is it all just kind of freelance well, stuff? Yeah. Cause honestly it came up because I was doing freelance work and it got to a point where, um, you know, I needed to be licensed to, and I started making too much money and you know, all that, but, um, yeah, so I just kind of fell into it because like, all right, if people are going to keep asking me to do it, you know, I better actually make it official. But whereas in the film industry, you know, you get hired per job and then you get paid through a production company. And that's the way I was more familiar with working. Um, but I was like, well, if, if I'm going to do work around here, there's not really where I'm at, you know, there's a couple production companies, but um, I'm not to say they're terrible or anything, but it's just like, they're not as, good quality. So I was like, well, maybe I can just kind of swoop in here, you know, and get some work and it has worked so far. Um, but yeah, I still do a lot of, uh, work on film though, too. Like I, I'll, um, do visual effects for different films and stuff and then do, um, uh, DVD jackets. And I still get asked to do film work, but so much of it isn't under my business name. You know, I still get hired on. So I just kind of had to give myself a title, a business that I could, um, you know, work under. And at this point, I'm, uh, that's how it started. At this point, I'm trying to actually grow um, and turn it into a production company. And that's uh, where I'm headed towards now. Okay. Well, that's, I, I love that. I love the fact that you took, you know, it is what it is. It's one of those stories where you took what you previously had, you loved it, but then you kind of took a little break and then you're back at it because you got to work a little bit harder, but it's what you love. So it doesn't really look like look, look like work. So that's, yeah. that's a great thing to have to deal, to have going for you. Um, okay. So kind of moving on here. So this show is called uh, shaping success. Okay. And what that means by me for me is 
is finding out what, how a person shapes their success. What do they look at success? How do they define it? Because it's different for every single person. You know, for me, it's helping other people succeed in reaching their goals. And I want to show mm -hmm. people that it's it's simple change of mindset that can push you forward and help you reach your goal. Kind of like you did by getting through that insecurity. Same thing I'm doing. Um, so can you tell us what the shape of your success is? How do you define success in your life and, and what you're doing? Well, I think it's really important to look at success as just being happy with where you're at. You know, like uh, you could have somebody that, you know, they could be working at McDonald's, be married and have kids. And if that's how they see success, if they're happy, then, you know, that's success for them. Like they had a job, maybe it was hard for them to get a job in the first place. They got this job. You know, I don't look down at anybody, you know, in that way. Um, you know, everybody's success is different. And for me, um, me personally, at first, like, yeah, I always felt like a failure. And it took, um, I don't know, it took a lot of work and then kind of understanding from other people's perspectives too on how I saw, or like how you're saying, you, know, you see success. But right now, I'm married, you know, I have two beautiful little boys. Uh, I'm doing what I love. And, you know, like I have a house, I have food on the table, you know, like I did succeed. I do um, have goals to go much further, but like, in my opinion, like I succeeded at doing what I love for a living. And, you know, I have a wife and kids and, you know, I really couldn't ask for anything more. doesn't mean I don't want more though, but just everything's good. And right. that's my kind of version of success. Yeah. And setting goals and attaining them is an awesome way to make that happen. I think that uh, I've been listening a lot to people like, I don't know if you've heard of Lewis Howes, but he's kind of along the line of Tony Robbins. He's, he's interviewed him multiple times and, and that's, you know, it is what, it is what you define it as it's happiness. It's finding those things. So it's, it's awesome to hear that. Um, so coming, coming down the pipe here, we want to talk a little bit about where we can find you. What are you doing? You know, I know I found you on Twitter. I'm pretty sure you're on all the other social medias. Is there a place that we can, can you tell us about where we can look at your stuff or find you or how we can get in contact with you if we, if someone needs a little help with some of the stuff that you do? Yeah. So, um, right now it's at John Hutton on Instagram. Um, I'm trying to remember my YouTube handle, uh, YouTube slash Jonathan Hutton. I think it is. I might have to verify that. Um, yeah. And then <laughs> Facebook is uh, facebook.com slash JH visuals and um, Twitter. It's at JH visuals. And then I do have a TikTok, and that's also at JH underscore visuals and uh, at John Hutton. Got two of them. Yeah. And if you guys haven't seen that before, there's some pretty funny videos on there. I, uh, <laughs> I, I laugh at all of them. The the one with the what if uh, adults had to go to potty like kids? That's so hilarious. There's a bunch oh, of yeah. stuff on there, but it's oh, it's yeah. pretty if funny. You're, if you're you... a boy, you know. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 when I was younger, the, a lot of that was actually partly true. Like like uh, when I was younger, I used to sleepwalk, and I ended up sleepwalking uh -huh. and peeing in my parents' fridge. So I ended up oh, I was like, oh, that'd be a good thing to throw in there. But I don't know, you'd have to you'd have to watch it if, it, if it's yeah. curious. Well, it was great having you on the show. I'm glad you're able to do this. I appreciate you making those logos for me and everything. It's it's been mm -hmm. it's it's been really cool, and we'll stay in contact for sure. Um, so thanks again for being here. Yeah, um, actually, can I add one thing? So yeah, um, go for it. So the one thing that I'd want to tell people, you know, uh, younger. It, no not matter how old you are, really. Like, I stuck with something for a long time when I was eight all the way up, you know, until I went to film school. And it worked. And, like, I was got a lot of notice and stuff for it. But uh, it was what other people told me that ended up, uh, you know, affecting me. But, you know, as you see now, like, YouTube got big. It was really big. And I was right there on that cusp right before people started getting paid for it. If I would have stuck around, you know, I could have probably easily made something of that too. And that was actually what I like doing. I just like making videos, you know, fun, funny videos, you know, it didn't matter. But yet I took what other people were saying and I let that affect me. And it, and that right there, it, it hurt. Like I'm over it now. I had to, but you know, there's that bit of regret, but if there's something you love and if it, people may not accept it now, but just go for it. If there's something you love, like just do it. You could start it on the side. It could be a side gig, but just just do it. Like there, 
you know, you'll find your place at some point. And, and that's a great message. I'm glad that you said that because I think that that is just like you said, it's we sit here and we let people define what our success looks like. Uh, and that's what society kind of dictates. And it's, it's really yeah. owning who you are and doing it on your own. So great work with that. That's awesome. All right. Well, that is the show. Um, if you feel that this show, if this show has brought you any value, please share it, help me out sharing it with people. Um, as you go out through your day and the rest of your week, I want you to think about it, how you define shaping your success. Have a great weekend. This was Shaping Success with Wes Tankersley brought to you by Aggressive Marketing Solutions. If you need a team of marketers to help you with social media, all you need to do to start is text WES2020 to 541-709-6502. 541-709-6502. That is Aggressive Marketing Solutions. Have a great day. See you next time.